it's interesting to be the artist between the work and between the viewer or a group of viewers and people will have all kinds of different responses but what we've seen over the years there's there's a scrambling to somehow try and understand the communication because you're inviting people you're trying to create a window so they're not intimidated by the art say they're drawn and they're shocked say they're trying to figure it out but so many times within a group where you're walking through each one of the words but, and you see the struggle, but a lot of times when you get to the panel, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? It's almost like you see a collective coin drop. Because everybody's getting something from each one of the words. Individually, stuff is going on. But the sense of abandonment, the sense of, I'm, I'm looking for God in a dark moment of suffering in my life, whatever the suffering is, every individual has a memory of a space of suffering where they're searching for God for an answer. Something, even if they don't believe in God, they're searching for something outside of themselves to relieve whatever suffering it is. And you, you watch a group, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And it's like, just like, they all seem to be there because they all have a collective memory, almost to that word. And to see the struggle and to try and understand it, it becomes a marker then for them. And again, you don't know what it's attached to, what they'll do with it after, but you're hoping they'll take it back to a place that I believe is the only place of healing for every suffering is back to his suffering. The seven words are like doorways in my mind of I examine his suffering, I take mine to him, and in a way he brings a, a hope of healing to it. And for sure an identification to me and to it. And at the same time to watch People, when they relate to the child in the crematorium, you know, it, again, they attach their memories, their frame of references to it. A lot of times, people that are involved in pro-life and everything, they'll see the child like a child in a womb. And the sense that the child's in a fetal position within the crematorium. And again, it's like, the ultimate place of vulnerability, the ultimate place of abandonment, and with the sense that they're in a place that is, is the end, the end of their life within this crematorium, within this womb, say. But for those that identify visually and they see the child's hand going through the door, the hope creatively, the hope within the work, is that they see a place of resurrection, a place of hope. The door is sealed. The meaning of these visual doors of the crematorium is the ultimate end statement to the factory of death within Auschwitz. But the hand penetrates it. And for the Jewish people, it's the clutching of the hand of this small piece of property that represents Israel, the land. The sense of the butterfly taking flight is, again, you can get into all kinds of layers of the death transformation, the caterpillar, the butterfly, but the connectedness relationally to the poem, I never saw another butterfly. The olive leaves on, the, on this little piece of property. The hope of anointing and healing from olive oil, from a biblical connect to that, is all a part of the communication. But is that struggle, that place of the deepest place of suffering to the deepest place of hope?